We have yet another baller gaming PC. Today I'm gonna show you what's all inside. I'll list out some alternate parts and then just like always, we're gonna benchmark it. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we have yet another very expensive but insanely powerful gaming and streaming PC that's actually rocking a white and green aesthetic. I've actually never used this color scheme before, so I'm just excited about that. And then just as a quick reminder, I do live stream all of my gaming PC builds just like we did this one over on twitch.tv slash Zach's Tech Turf every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you over there. But yeah, let's kick things off with the parts list. Today's video is sponsored by Pulseway and not just their awesome remote monitoring and managing solution, which I personally use down here in my studio, but also their upcoming Techathlon event happening on September 3rd at 9 p.m. IST, 11.30 a.m. EST. This is the ultimate tech quiz event for all of you computer and IT experts out there, and they're giving away some really dope prizes such as Apple AirPods and the Pulseway RMM software. Feel free to click that first link in the description to register for free, and make sure you represent the ZTT fam out there with a big win. All right, so starting with the CPU, every part I talk about is linked down in the description, by the way, a lot of you that watch those live streams should be familiar with this. This is my old Ryzen 7 3700X that used to be my main CPU until I upgraded to the 3900X. The 3700X is starting to dip its toes around that $260 to $270 price range, and since it's rocking 8 cores and 16 threads with a max boost clock of 4.4 GHz, this is one beast of a CPU. The motherboard that it's attached to is also my old ASRock X570 Steel Legend. To be very honest, this decision was made purely because there aren't many white and black x570 options out there so if you're replicating this build be sure to go with one that has features that you personally need i definitely enjoy the color scheme built-in io shield and two gem ford x4 m.2 slots and i don't have any complaints about this motherboard next up is the ram and this set i have probably used around like three to four times already this is the 16 gigabyte corsair dominator platinum rgb clocked at 3000 megahertz now to be honest a build this expensive should probably have more ram than 16 gigabytes but just as a reminder this was just a leftover part from my last build so that's why i threw it in this one 16 gigabytes is perfectly fine and then if anything it allows us to spend more money on the gpu speaking of which this is the nvidia rtx 2080 super founders edition and i can't emphasize how excited that i am that i finally got this in a gaming pc build guide some of you might already know this but i actually got this over a year ago when nine other youtubers and myself visited the nvidia headquarters they gave it to us while we were there because it was the actual launch day of the 2080 super and this is now my first time featuring it in a build guide. Yep, that does mean that this roughly seven to $800 graphics card was sitting on my shelf here as a prop for over a year, and I was completely disgusted with myself for not using it, so that's why I'm super pumped for today's video. Continuing on with our parts list, we get to the SSD, and this is the Crucial P1 500 gigabyte model, which is one of my favorite NVMe drives because it's rocking super fast speeds of 2000 over 1700, it has DRAM, and it's consistently one of the cheapest options out there. Now, once again, a high-end gaming PC like this should probably have more than 500 gigabytes of storage in my opinion, but once again, this was all I had left in my studio, and this is still a very insanely powerful gaming PC. Next up is the power supply, and this here is the Rosewell Photon 850, which is 80 plus gold certified. It's rated tier C on the LTT list, and it's fully modular with all black cables. And finally, for our last core component of this build, we have the case. This one you probably recognize from my Hackintosh build I did a couple of months ago, and this is the Be Quiet Pure Base 500 with the tempered glass side panel option. I'm really in love with the aesthetics of this one. You can choose the top panel to be better for airflow or volume levels, and it's just a super slick and clean design. So next up, we have some aesthetic part choices, and you guys already know by now that I don't include these parts in the final price list because you don't need them to achieve the same gaming performance, but if you're like me, then you don't mind spending a few extra dollars to make your high-end gaming PC look baller. First up are these RGB fans, and these are the Antec Prism 120 ARGBs. I also featured these in that Hackintosh video I talked about earlier. These are pretty solid and can be controlled via your motherboard's RGB port, or with the buttons on the control box, so it's always nice to have that option for both. The other aesthetic choice are these black and green PSU cable extensions. These I actually got from Antec, and although the product itself is perfectly fine, there are two quick things that I want to comment on. The first one is that this color shade of green is insanely hard to match with RGB products. I would assume that this wasn't intentional, but if you're going to replicate this build, then just be careful with what other parts that you're going to pair with these cable extensions. On that live stream, it just took so long to get this color from the RGB 
RGB fans to even remotely match it. And I still, it's not even perfect yet. The second thing is that these are the sturdiest PSU cable extensions that I've ever used so far. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I thought it was worth noting because these are way different than any other extensions that I've used before. With that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like. I do want to re-emphasize for all you keyboard warriors down in the comment section that this one isn't necessarily the most 100% optimized gaming PC build. The only thing that I actually bought for this entire thing that I didn't already have in the studio were these cable extensions. So yeah, please keep that in mind. For some quick alternative part recommendations, I'm just going to assume that if you're following this high of an end gaming PC build guide that you have aspirations of streaming as well, I would really recommend upgrading that 16 gigabytes of RAM to 32 gigabytes. You don't need 32 for just gaming, but if you're streaming, having multiple programs running and Chrome tabs and all that, you're probably going to want more than 16 gigabytes. The next upgrade I would make is for the storage. A 500 gigabyte SSD just doesn't last nearly as long as it should because of games like Call of Duty Warzone, so I definitely upgrading to at least one terabyte. And then finally, if you are on somewhat of a strict budget and you don't need the maximum amount of frames in 1440p ultra settings, you would certainly be fine with something like a 2070 Super, so you have more money to spend on other things like I just talked about. Next up, it's time for the benchmarks, and I'm still kind of torn on this. I have a feeling that a lot of you are really enjoying my new benchmarking style where I include some commentary and the webcam on top of some of those games. So it, regardless if you like it or not, please just continue to let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. The first game up was Fortnite because I just can't be killed in this game apparently. And in 1440p with pro settings, AKA low with far view distance, I got an obnoxious 232 frames per second. Probably should just bump this one up to high settings or something. Anybody else land here? Oh, where's this dude landing? Dude, this guy's screwed. <laughs> Sorry, man. He didn't even have a chance in this one. Sorry. Better luck next time. Oh, you too? You too? These poor guys. They can't even play the game. Th this is not fair. Oh, hello, sir. You trying to kill me? Get out of here. Oh, do you have a weapon? Or are you just kind of built in here? Because I have, like, no health. Nope, you don't. See ya. Goodbye. I see you hiding in the bridge, loser. Come on, man. You have to have a better hiding spot than that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, not good. Ah, nice try, nice try. After that was the brand new Horizon Zero Dawn, which just got ported over to PC. I actually just made a dedicated benchmarking video on this one, by the way. And in 1440p and high settings, I only managed to squeeze out 59 frames per second. But keep in mind, at the time of testing it, this is still a very unoptimized and also demanding game to run. After that was Rainbow Six Siege. To be clear, I always use the built-in benchmarking tool, but I record gameplay so it's less boring for you guys. And in 1440p and ultra settings, I got 262 frames per second. Valorant followed after that. Definitely enjoying the much shorter game mode such as Spike Rush and Team Deathmatch lately, and in 1440p with high settings, I got a very solid 216 FPS average. Here he is. Oh, hello, hello, headshot. Sit down. I got you, man. I'll save the day. I got you. Redemption, man. Oh, oh, spawn. Spawn kill. Dude, you can't spawn kill me. Get out of here. Oh, hello, sir. Headshot, baby. Long distance. Double kill. Let's go. That's how we do it. Oh, hello, sir. You just gonna stand there? That's not the smartest move, my friend. I got you, man. I'll save you. Yep, no problem. Another one coming? I think there's another one coming. There he is. Yep. Oh, hello. Hello. Too slow, homie. Meet in the middle? Nope, you're dead. This is my house now. Don't come around here again, man. Uh oh, behind me. Behind me. They're dead. Oh, wait. Right here. Dude, you had to have seen that coming. Uh oh. Bad shot. Oh, great shot. I feel like this is about to be a face-off. Yep, there they are. And I won. Gears 5 was tested next. I'm actually also slightly enjoying the campaign of this one, and I wish I had more time for lower priority games like this. And in 1440p with ultra settings, I got 78 frames per second. Speaking of games I wish I had more time for, Borderlands 3 definitely makes that list as well. And in 1440p with ultra settings, I got 68 FPS. This one is definitely GPU demanding and very tough to run in ultra settings, no matter what the resolution is. And for the last game I tested, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I made a decision, and unlike most things on this channel, I don't care what any of you guys say about this one, instead of testing in Warzone, I tested in a normal online multiplayer match. I absolutely can't stand Warzone anymore, and I think I might just be done with it, but in 1440p high settings, I got 127 frames per second. See, this is why I don't play Warzone, because I can actually get kills like that. that see, that's much more fun. See, there's another one. And another one. 
Let's do one something. Dude, come on, man. Don't come over in my neck of the woods. Come on now. Oh, there he is. He dead, dude. You can't sneak up on me like that. Come on now. This guy too? Oh, I'm gonna run the- Oh, hello. You're dead. What are these people trying to do in my cave? See? Get out. This is my cave. You should go back to playing Warzone. This is such a stupid map. But I'll get kills no matter what, though. Double kill. I hate this map, though. I'll get this, dude. Don't worry, man. Look at him just sitting there. Wow. What an idiot. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Don't get back up. Just stay down. You too. And just like always, at least when I remember to, I wanted to throw in a 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. For those of you that want a consistent reference point across all different types of builds, this gaming PC cranked out a score of 10,934. As you can see, this gaming PC can definitely pack a punch in 1440p and ultra settings in virtually any game you throw at it. And this is certainly one powerful and capable gaming and even streaming PC as well. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section what you thought of it. And also be sure to check out the ZTT Discord channel. Not only do we have a baller PC building community, but there's also a ZTT builds channel where we feature both the community's builds and my own so you have a ton of inspiration for your next PC and there's also the ZTT deals channel to help save you some money. I hope to see you all over there and just like always I hope you enjoy this video.